Well, the most important part of our job is is uh, trying to affirm homeless people. The hardest part of being homeless is not actually sleeping on the street or being bored during the daytime. We had a guy lived with us for a few years. When he was 18, he went to live with his girlfriend. Uh, after about a year, they split up and he went down to the streets because he had nowhere else to go. After a couple of months in the streets, he threw himself into the Liffey. To his dismay, he was rescued. And he was brought to hospital. And I went up to see him in hospital. He said, Peter, I can't go on living like this. And I asked him, what do you mean living like what? And he said, I can't go on living knowing that nobody cares. And that's actually the hardest part of being homeless. Living, knowing that if you disappeared off the streets of Dublin, nobody would even notice you were gone. Your life has no value to anybody else. You've totally lost your self-esteem. You've totally lost your dignity. And therefore, what I would always say, what we're doing in our in, in our work, yes, we give people, homeless people, accommodation, we give them drug treatment, we give them counselling. But what we're really trying to do is to give them the message that they're just as important and just as valuable as anybody else. Our job in fundraising for Peter McVerry Trust is to raise more than two and a half million every year to run our services. Those services we know are needed in the community um, more and more than ever. We have more and more people coming to us who need our support. So it's important that people support the work of the Trust um, and the work that Father McFerry has set up and that the Trust is sustaining long into the future. Unfortunately, that's the sad side of it, that we are going to have to provide our services for a long time to come. Well, we provide a range of services for homeless people. We try to fill the gaps in services that uh, are not being filled. If, uh, we, if we weren't providing the services that we provide, there is no question about it, but that many homeless people and many of those with drug problems uh, would, would find themselves in severe difficulties. So recently RBC Dexia have taken part in that programme um, out at the Detox Centre, but we've had many others over the past number of years. And that's important for people to come out and not only give of their time, um, because it's not just about giving money to the Trust, but getting to know the work that we do. My name is Bernard Crowley, I'm the manager of the Community Detox. I have been involved with it for five years, two and a half years as project worker and two and a half years as manager. What we do here is, uh, basically as, as the name says, we detox people from methadone. It's a, a six-week uh, programme with seven beds with a maximum throughput of 55 to 60 people per year. When you actually come and see somebody and you see them as another human being trying to get their life back on track from something that really is soul destroying and crippling, it does open your eyes to the different aspect of that. You know, that, you know, that could be you, could be your relative, could be a friend of yours, whatever, just the circumstances were different. And you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, I think it gives a lot of hope for people. Well, at this stage, it's a little uh, small or medium sized company. We have 78 staff. Uh, we have to raise a substantial amount of money. We have a budget of about five and a half million. About half of that comes from the state and uh, we have to fundraise the other half. My name is Liam Doyle and um, I am the Horticulture Coordinator at the Community yeah, Detox. Right. I've been here for five years since before the centre opened. Um, initially I was here as a landscaper working on the site, um, but I have experience in community work, that's where my background is. And um, basically I was here developing the site before the house opened. And the house reopened four years ago now. Um, and we've been taking in clients ever since, roughly about 50 clients a year. And I work with them every afternoon on the land. Our managing director did a fun cycle race and uh, as a part of the charity committee it was one of the things that we helped donate towards. And we thought the trust, when we looked into it with uh, Father Peter McVerry, was something that was really worthwhile to potentially, you know, help to invest in, whether it be financially or with man hours or help. And I suppose it kind of took off from there, really. We find our work in fundraising becoming more challenging given the current climate that we're all living in um, with the recession. So we would appeal to people to continue supporting the Trust. It's again about giving people not just a sense of their own value, but a sense of hope for the future. The possibility that things can be, can be better and different in the future. And therefore, those who support us and who help fund us, I always say, talk about them as partners in our work. I think 
Everybody supports what Father McVeary stands for and what the Trust is trying to achieve and we would just ask people to continue getting involved with what we do and whether it's giving your time, whether it's giving your money, whether it's taking part in an event, it all makes a big difference to us.